Let's go see what we can find. It's almost always the first thing I find at this location is some white-tailed deer. They're so tolerant here, it's amazing. You pretty much get to just kind of hang out with them. Except for this one. It didn't want me to get very close. So I initially got a shot out on the road and then I wanted to move over to see if I could get some foreground involved. And thankfully it stayed just long enough for me to get that shot. So you can see the foreground on the left just definitely gives more depth to the photo here. And then that deer moved off and I went back to the first one I was working with, which was still just hanging out over here. It's so nice when they're relaxed like this. There was some brush in the way, but it was out of focus enough that it didn't affect the image too much. But it was a busy shot anyway, nothing special here. I always like trying to get them with their ears towards me. It was funny, you could see it, every step, it would occasionally sink through the crusty surface of the snow, which is exactly what was happening to me. And then I got its attention making a little noise and got this peak. From there, I left the deer and started working with these red winged blackbirds. Oh, that's such a great sound. There were two males in the spot basically calling back and forth. I started with this one up high in a tree. Just tried to go for a lighter background and a high key offset like that. The trees prevented it from being pure white back there. I started moving around to see if I could find something better, but there wasn't much better. just kept placing the bird in the bottom right of the frame so that way the most of the space was clean and then wait for it to sing out and then this showed up I couldn't believe it kept coming right at me and it came so close then all of a sudden saw me and just bolted and that was that back to the red winged blackbirds And now they were down in the Phragmites like this, and I love shooting like this through these little openings, but you gotta find just the right spot. You can see them flying around in that. There we go. Get a nice singing song and just the right opening. 
so much fun. And even when they're more scenic and far away like that, it works well. And then I recorded just some clean video of these guys, and I'll let you enjoy this for a little bit. Watching them work their way through the reeds like this was so much fun. And then I was back to stills. So it was really important that I wait for the head angle. This bird had to look back at me like that. And then I really tried every time to offset compose it. So placing the bird left or right some ducks in the nearby pond. And it would feel like inevitably whichever way I would compose the image, the bird would look the opposite direction. <laughs> and then when they were in one spot for a while, I would just start moving around, seeing if I could find other openings, other pockets to shoot through, more interesting foregrounds, uh, more interesting perches that they were on. That's a great opening right there. I love the head-on look on that one, too. If you ever get to spend some time with these birds, they're really worth spending some time with. Just because of the fun compositions you can do. And I switched to vertical here just to make something a little different. I really like how some of these turned out. I composed the bird low in the frame for the first set. And then I realized it might be interesting to go high in the frame and have all those lines kind of pointing up towards the bird. And I thought that worked well also. Let's see what opening I can find here. That works quite nicely. I love how the Phragmites just go light. The soft overcast light worked really well here. No shadows to contend with. And then the snow in the background just provided even a little bit more of a lighter background. It worked out quite nicely. This one I backed away to get even more scenic. I was able to include a lot more of the Phragmites and then just wait for them to sing. There we go. And then after that, I found one that landed a little closer and started working that. So I ended up tucking in right under this little tree in front of me here. So I could get a little bit lower perspective with more foreground obstruction. And I had to find an opening as well. Found it. Oh, the one little piece of grass in the front of a bird. Can't get them all perfect. 
I wrapped up with the Red Wing Blackbirds and went off to see what else I could find. And next up was some song sparrows and white-throated sparrows feeding on the ground. This guy was all fidgety. Got him in the opening right there. Nice clean shot. Nothing too special. And then I was able to compose this next one better, but then the grass came in and touched his head, which was a bummer. I feel so often these sparrows are so overlooked, but watching this behavior and the way they feed, it was cracking me up. There's such personality there, they're so quick, and especially when they get on the ground, and you'll see in a bit when they start really kicking up the ground like this. How cool is that? Just a little slower version of it. It was so neat to watch them doing what they have to do to survive, finding food everywhere. And then, of course, cleaning up and looking pretty. That was a nice little jump. And then I went back to working with this song sparrow who kept landing and bouncing around on these open clumps of grass in the snow. And at first I shot him on the top and it was nice and clean, but I realized the shots were kind of boring. There was not a lot of depth to them. Nothing wrong with that. Solid shot. But what I really wanted was some foreground. So I took my camera off the tripod, laid it down in the snow and then work my way over so I could use a little mound of snow in the foreground when the sparrow landed in this one spot right here. And then I just started playing with moving the camera up and down to get just the right amount of blur in the foreground for a little bit more interesting photo. And that I like more. Sorry for the shaking here. This whole rig is insanely heavy to handhold. This was one of the first times I had done it. But he was real cooperative and just sat in this one spot for a while. And you can see I'm just using that mound of snow in the foreground to determine how much foreground obstruction I'm getting. So if I lift up a little higher, it's clean. And then watch as I lower down, you can start to see that fade coming from the bird. Now this is probably a little too much, so yep, I should move up a little bit. And then somewhere in between, you find just the right mix that you want. And you get the shot. I spent a little more time just watching these sparrows feed in the area, seeing what I could come up with. Listening to the sounds of the city in the background. And I don't know if you noticed, there was a red-bellied woodpecker making some calls in the background too. But it's amazing, in such of a mess of tangles like this, if you shoot right and spend some time and get the right foreground, you can still turn up some really nice photos. After I had enough time with these sparrows, I started walking along and I was not at all expecting what I was going to see next. Can you find the bird? And it's not what you hear. Look for the eyes. There it is. I found a great horned owl on the ground. This was the habitat. It was actually drinking on this shoreline when I flushed it, unfortunately. I didn't see it there. But then it just sat on the other side of the creek and allowed me to get some photos and listen none of these are great the background is incredibly busy but it was so cool to see it on the ground relatively close and in the snow so I composed a shot or two like that and that was that
There's a close up for you. Look at those eyes. The bird is so frozen and stationary. It was incredible. So I didn't stay long. I took a few angles. Realized the bird was looking a little agitated. Here you can see the eyes are getting a little bit bigger. It's kind of fluffed out a little bit more. And it was time to leave. And so I moved on. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me on this outing. This was a fun one. It's been forever since I've done something like this where I've gone out with no target, no specific species, no photograph in mind. Yesterday I was planning, what should I do today? And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go to this park here in Southern New Jersey. I haven't been to it in a very long time. And I used to spend so much time here and I don't know why, I just haven't been back in a very long time. So I decided, let me just go there and see what I see. Like I said, it's been a very long time since I've done that. Lately, for the past four or five years, the majority of my outings are all targeted for very specific species or specific photos or specific scouting. So today was kind of a breath of fresh air to just get out and wander around. I had zero expectations, so I knew I was just gonna come out and if I saw something great, and if I didn't, no big deal. As you saw when I was coming here, it's a very urban area. I'm just gonna pause for a second to let that jet go overhead. There you go, hopefully you can hear me now. So this is a very urban area. Right over there is the Delaware River behind the camera there. I can see the Philadelphia skyline not too far. There's a Carolina wren bouncing around right over there right now. And just a little bit ago, a nice little herd of small white-tailed deer walked by. Today was really fun. Like I said, I had no expectations, but I ended up seeing some really good stuff. As you saw, I got to see a red fox. I think the video quality was good enough for me to include in this video, but we'll see. If not, it was really cool to see anyway. He spotted me pretty quickly, even though I wasn't moving at all, and then turned around and bolted. After that red fox, I got to spend a, probably about an hour to an hour and a half with a pair of red-winged blackbirds. Uh, there was just two males, and had a really fun time with them in the Phragmites, just trying to see what I could capture, something unique, a little bit more habitat, and that habitat is one of the pretty ones around. So I always have fun photographing anything in those Phragmites, even though I know they're a bit of an invasive species. From there, I just wandered around to see what I would see. I ended up on a nice flock of sparrows, spent some really good time with them, and then shortly after that, found this great horned owl, which was a blast. So all in all, a really successful outing, and I, especially because I had no expectations. So I think I got some great photos. Listen, nothing is amazing. These are by far not the best shots I've ever captured, but it was fun. It was really neat to just go out, wander around, be out in nature. It was a beautiful morning, nice overcast light the whole morning. And in fact, for the first three hours of the outing today, there was like some thin clouds and some sun just barely coming through. It was perfect lighting. So I got really lucky with that. So I just wanted to thank you for watching these videos and joining me on these adventures. I hope you are getting something from them. And I gotta ask you a favor. It's a lot of work to do these videos, and, but I do have fun doing them. It's just, I have to kind of manage time. And I'd love to do one of these every week. I don't know if I'll be able to keep up that schedule, but I'll try my best. What I'm asking of you though, is if you can just let me know what you think of these videos in the comments below. Give me some feedback. Let me know if you're learning something. Let me know if you're enjoying these. And the best thing you can do then is to share them with your friends and fellow photographers. That is a huge help for me. Getting more people watching these videos is just gonna be more motivation for me to do this. So that is the favor I'm asking of you. If you really like these videos and you are getting something from them, if you're learning some stuff, getting some ideas, getting some inspiration, please do me a favor and share that with your fellow photographers. I'll be forever grateful and it gives me, like I said, the motivation to keep doing more of these videos. So with that, I thank you in advance if you've taken the time to share them, and I hope you enjoyed this outing. I'll see you on the next one.